I've been a comedian for 12 years. I graduated college with two degrees in three years. And it's the first time my mother's been proud of me. It's because <laughs> I spoke to this person. And you, you have no idea. <laughs> you know, when, I mean, whenever you say the two degrees thing, I'm like, how did he, he barely can read. How did he, no. how did he get both of them? <laughs> See, but the thing is, you don't have to take any tests if you just walk in and steal two degrees off the wall. I mean, why? I don't understand why this hey, is a big no issue. No questions but, asked. <laughs> but let's talk to our guest. I mean, look, I got two degrees. I don't know who these guys' names are on there. But let's talk to our guest. The absolute honor, the pride, and I'm going to say this, Wildly incorrectly, Tegucigalpa. <laughs> I hope I said that correct. Maybe. The pride of Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ana Yurka, everybody. Hey! <laughs> Thank you so much. And please kiss your mother for me. And I really want to know what school did you attend it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went to uh, I went to clown college. No, I'm joking. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's great because you're always making people laugh. Christian, nice to meet you. Nice to yeah. finally meet you as well. I know you met Alexis, yes, at, at Premier League Live, and it was uh, it was it was so cool to see that you know it was an exciting thing for the Cooligans to get for the Cooligans to get some representation on Telemundo. You are obviously at Telemundo Deportes, and probably the first question I, I have to ask because, like Alexis mentioned how proud his mom was to see him on Telemundo. We all grew up uh, on Telemundo. My parents are from Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. it, is, it was on all the time, all the characters, all the shows, no, from novelas to, to, to news. It, it's, it is a, a, an institution that is very important to the Latino community. So what is it simply like getting to work there and build your career at Telemundo? Oh, thank you. That's so nice. I'm glad you watch La Doctora Polo and all the novelas <laughs> <laughs> all, all day. My mom does the same thing. It, it is honestly, it's 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 a blessing. Uh, I know it is a, a huge blessing for me because I used to watch it when I was uh, growing up. I was watching Maria Celeste, Ana El Rojo Vivo, yes. and and everything. And I was like, hey, one day I might be on TV, and I wish I could be just like her doing my thing and everything. And now I come to this building and I practically, I, I'm kind of like a, the mayor of Telemundo Center. Every, I know everyone. I know if there was a voting situation, I would be crowned the mayor of Telemundo. Yeah. It's, it's really cold inside Telemundo. And at the same time, it's warm because we're all Latinos. It's very like... It's crazy because we get the Cubans, the Dominicans, the Colombians, uh, a Honduran. It's so it's it's okay. wild. We gotta and ask the question. We gotta ask the question. You probably you guys are probably in cubicles and stuff. Who's the loudest on the phone? Be honest. Who are the loudest people? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a fair competition. I'm from Honduras, and trust me, trust me, I am louder than a lot of Cubans around here. So that's I that's think impressive. That's a Latino thing. That's, a that's Latino impressive thing. because yeah. I've Cubans whispering could blow out your earlobe. You know what I mean? Like, Oye, quiero un Latino. Oh yeah. No se lo diga nadie, pero lo que te voy a decir aquí mismo es un secreto. It's a, yeah. it's a, you know the neighbors. We're in the know. middle of a Premier League game, and we're like yeah. this. And uh, uh, Manuel Sol is saying something. Copan Alvarez is doing the play-by-play, -play, and all of a sudden, a Cuban, "Hey, who wants cafecito?" Yeah. Him, and we're like, "Shh." Yeah. And yeah, it, it's crazy, but I think you know it's what? a Latino thing. We're all right, scream. Right. <laughs> Forget who's the loudest. Which accent was the most difficult for you to become comfortable with? Because sometimes, for those of us in the Caribe, <laughs> it's a little difficult to understand. Mexicans when they speak, especially together, because it's a little sing songy. And then the first time I heard two Dominicans talk to each mm. other, I was like, I don't even think that's Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're Cubans, we barely finish any word. <laughs> no. You're gonna get me in trouble with that question. But, as, but... but when you move from Honduras to, to to Florida, at first, what was the most difficult accent for you to sort of relate to? I'm or sorry, Christian. I have to say, I... Dominicans. I <laughs> still you. have a hard time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't. You know understand. what? It's because it's because there's too much swagger in yeah, our yeah, yeah. In, in I our don't dialect. know. Taught <laughs> these Jamaicans how to speak Spanish. I'm like, wait, that's Spanish? <laughs> no, but honestly, I used to work in a local station in Orlando. That's when I started uh, living in the states, and I used to go and cover the Tampa Bay Rays games or the Orlando Tragic. I mean, the Orlando Magic. <laughs> and whenever there was someone you know like when you are doing color stories with the audience yeah. like who, wh what did you think about the game or whatever and the Dominicans started talking I was like 
Sure. <risa> yeah, no, no, da, da, dame decirte yeah. lo que está pasando acá. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now ahora yo hablo como un tigre dominicano, ya yeah. lo entiendo, tú sabes. Hilarious. No, man, it, it is it, it is such a cool thing. And you know, and, and as far as um, you know, being Latinos in see, in soccer, right? A, 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 a Cuban, a Dominican in the American soccer world, even to other Latinos, we have to we have to prove ourselves. Right. You, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. it's like a, it, it's like this weird hierarchy or, or whatever. But it, it must be a cool thing, it, you know, especially on Telemundo. Even uh, I remember, you know, Alexa had mentioned you were asking him about Liga MX. And 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 what team to to support and uh you know for, from as a as a journalist as a reporter making those you know did, did you make a like a decision on on a team to support do you have to stay neutral uh, what's it like for you I think that was in the I don't know in the old times I think now I I I think we are all allowed to say hey I support this team or this team or that team. I think it even gives you more credibility because if you're we saying, hey, I love this team, I'm going to suffer with this team, I'm going to support it. But at the same time, whenever I'm talking about, uh, I don't know, a game specific and they suck and the other one is <laughs> doing good and you're saying it, it gives you more credibility. I think now we're more open to say it. Now, I don't remember if I told you which team Chivas, you should support. Right? I, I like the Chivas because they're all Mexicans, and I think the more teams in in our countries uh, have this system, it's better for the national teams. That's right, just right. my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just think that. So I like uh, supporting Chivas, although they suck. They're really, really, really bad. <laughs> you, I don't know if you guys should go for Necaxa. Maybe may, may, maybe you guys can adopt Necaxa. You know they have long enough history to okay. be respected. Uh, Necaxa. I don't know they cute because it was Don Ramon's team. You know from El ne Chavo del Ocho. Ne oh wow! Ne ne uh, Necaxa played a friendly against our MLS team NYCFC uh, a couple of years ago. This was a, a preseason match. So I'm I'm watching and I'm like, oh, you know what? This is maybe four or five years ago. I'm like, oh, the, the level of MLS has to be at a pr pretty even with Liga Mex Necaxa. Who, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, with all due respect, I was like, what, ne what Necaxa? Necaxa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I, watched it, then I watched the game, and I'm like, are we like a, a U14 team playing against? <laughs> the, why are they so good? I mean, and with just the level of, of pretty much, you know, a, a, a top table or lower table Liga MX team is still pretty, pretty high. But I also, I want to be, you know, look, I already suffer. I'm an Arsenal fan. I've had a good time watching <laughs> NYCFC. I know, right? <laughs> I've watched NYCFC win a trophy. It's been amazing. I want more. Mm -hmm. So sh why shouldn't I just become a, uh, you know, like a Club America fan? Right? No, 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 That's easy. That's easy, okay? It's what I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, my team, my team. I go for Real Madrid. It's easy to be a Real Madrid fan, a Manchester United fan, now a Manchester City fan. Uh, I mean, no. You have to choose a team where you are suffering. And they right. had their good times. Like, Necaxa had, the, you know, their good times in the 90s. And everything from the 90s is coming back. So you could do Necaxa. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. What uh, about Rayados? They got that cool mountain in the background. No, they're too powerful. They have too much too much money. No, no. Who's got the most we're money? Screw America, right? No, we're poor people. We cannot be regios. Okay. I'm already a Knicks fan. I got like I wish we were the Orlando Tragic. You know what I mean? Well, you know what? Yes. Unless he suffers a lot already. Right, yes. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know you... what? I, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'll be right. an Americanista. <laughs> <laughs> the other, I also wanted to talk uh, maybe a little bit about L Liga Max Femenil, right? Because we've been seeing uh, mm -hmm. a, a couple uh, a incredible uh, matches. You know, the, the support is is really really there. Even you know the the, the internet is still you know either the, that machismo, that just like dumb comments and stuff like that. But when you see the yeah. level of support, uh, especially in Liga mm -hmm. Max Femenil, there's been some in incredible matches uh, with with tons and tons of fans. What what's that uh, kind of feeling like to get to see something like that and then to cover it a little bit as well? It's really cool because you know that they're getting there. You know, it's getting it's getting better. Before, you you didn't see anybody in the stadiums. Like you know, they they would 
they would get the girls playing like I don't know two hours before the the men's team just right. to, to get like entertain people you know like whenever they when when they do that with the with the youngsters right, right. so yeah. nobody knew who they were and all of a sudden I think after 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 France 2019 I think after the World Cup this last World Cup in France the women's soccer got a lot, lot more attention. And in Mexico, you've seen the Clásicos, like the Clásico Regio. We're making fun about how rich the Regios are, like Monterrey and Tigres. But they do things good, and they are investing in them. And you can see, like, I, I, I remember I was watching a Clásico Regio, like, a, a couple of tournaments ago. And I was literally crying because it, it was full. It was the yeah. whole, the, 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 the full stadium, like just cheering on them. And it was, it was really, really cool, but they still have a lot of work to do. What do you think about like, you know, when it comes to the national teams, obviously, um, you know, whether it's women's or men's, there's a ton, ton of passion in Mexico uh, for mm -hmm. uh, the national team. But there's also with that comes all of the pressure on top of that, now you obviously you're Hondureña, but being with Telemundo, you have to cover the Mexican national team. It's probably yeah. the most important unit that you cover at Telemundo, <laughs> probably gets the most attention. What is it like for, you know, Tata Martino? Is it, you know, is he comfortable right now? <laughs> uh, is there is there pressure? Is he sweating? Is there ever a chance to relax when you're the national team? <laughs> right. Yeah, the water started to recede. Uh, and what do you think? You think they have a chance? Making this I up? think they're starting to. Uh, like, uh, they started to think. You know how that 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 meme on on social media. Whenever they used to see, yeah, you start yeah, seeing Marcito <laughs> getting like this, I yeah. think they're starting to get Tata Martino like that and trying to. And they're getting like you know those ghosts from Chepo de la Torre coming back. Is they're suffering? I mean, this next game is so 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 important like if they don't win this game he's gonna be in in deep 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 trouble <laughs> in <Yes>. deep trouble <laughs> because i mean come on they had a horrible horrible 2021 right. they lost the three games against the u.s and 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 horrible horrible yeah. <laughs> then the, i think yeah. yeah the nation's league final was first then I think it was the Copa Oro final and then the the, the, the qualifying the game. So no, no, no. <laughs> Trust me. If they if they see if they if they would watch the women's national team playing like right now, they would be happy with them. I mean Licha Cervantes, <laughs> that girl, she's like right. <laughs> give it to me. I'm gonna score everything I get. But when it comes to the men right now, they're just they're just not getting it, well, so it, they're better they pick it up. If they can't find goals, call her up instead. They're not calling Chicharito, so, you know, yes. they need help. <laughs> no, no, no. He started good. He started good. Oh, man, if he comes to Chicharito, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> well, I'm over. There, is a, there is another World Cup qualifier coming up between the U.S. and Honduras. Honduras is having a bit of... <laughs> you having can't even bring up the name. <laughs> a bit of a tough time in these qualifiers. Uh, they were, I believe, in last place. Uh, but look, the, the, this match is obviously going to be very, very difficult. But anything can happen in these qualifiers. The one thing that is interesting is that this game will be in Minnesota. Yeah, it's going to be very, very cold. Honduras yeah. is a not cold, not a cold country by Are by they training means. at the tops of mountains? <laughs> How, are they do How are they gonna do this? <laughs> they don't nope. even know they don't even have a place to train. <laughs> no. Honestly, dude, like I'm I'm I was watching I was literally uh last night I was uh going through, you know, like the images of the the the, um, the trainings in every like of every team. And whenever I saw like Jordan Morris, which he's back, his experience a guy, like with the snow and everything, I was like, in Ohio it's gonna be in the thirties, <laughs> but in Minnesota for El Salvador, for for guys. They're going right. to freeze their bubble, right? <laughs> but then for Honduras, it's going to be three degrees, three degrees. 
like the coldest, the coldest, coldest, coldest you get in Honduras, it would be, I don't know, 72, 70. Wow. <laughs> so, no, 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 it's going to be brutal. But you know what? I think that was bad of U.S. soccer, not because of Honduras or El Salvador. I think it's bad for the U.S. team. Why would you make it harder for them? I mean, you have the U.S. like players uh, in Europe. I mean, Chelsea, Juventus, Leipzig, uh, Barcelona. And they're not just part of the team. They're playing, okay? Right. They're playing yeah. at those clubs. And then you have Honduras, like horrible team. Like co the quality is just like, it's like, <laughs> I don't know, comparing... Uh, El Olympia with Manchester City, like something like that. <laughs> and you and you have to go to a cold place. Come on. Yeah, I think it's, it's just. Yeah, no. I wonder what you're, you know, even as Latinos, we think about it as well because, you know, U.S. soccer is they're 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 strategizing. Right. They they, mm -hmm. they play in places where they don't think that the, the away support will be will be too high. And we know Latinos are everywhere. OK, we yeah. We, yeah. we love this country just as much as anybody else. We're we'll all find a way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. And, but it is always seems to be this 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 strategy where sometimes it can feel a little bit. Uh, look, it, it, insulting uh, in, in a way mm -hmm. that, it's, that the games are always in these cities where they think that there's less of that Latino, like, you know, contingency. And that was in the old times when nobody cared about the U.S. soccer in the States. Now, yeah. now, if you have good soccer, people are going to support them. Like I used to ask my friends, hey, why don't you support the U.S. team? Why don't you know about the U.S. team? And they said, because they suck, they never win. But they now they have good players. Now they're falling in love with their team. So I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I get the point where, okay, I need, if I take them to Florida, it's going to be full of Central Americans. But they also are going to have a lot of yeah. U.S. I, supporters. I think yeah. it's, it's the, the U.S. The, the, they don't want to happen at the in the last cycle where at, at Rebel Arena against Costa Rica and it yeah. lost I believe two nil two one. But that's and, the one city where but, but, <laughs> there's a ton of <laughs> Costa Ricense. I mean, good God, it's like it's like playing the national the Mexican national team at the Rose Bowl. I mean, you might as well just not even do it. And I agree with Anna. What, why? You know, it's not like the Honduran team has to play in three degrees and the U.S. team gets to play in seventy. We're all in the yeah. same cold weather. This sucks for them. This this also sucks for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're getting, you know, they're getting injuries and stuff. So can you imagine in the cold? Like, why would you do that to your players? No, no, no. Oh, you, I, know, I you know how hard the ground gets? It's an oh. advantage for the U.S. team. And I get it. And I support if they're doing that. Because, hey, whenever they go to San Pedro Sula, it's freaking 100 degrees. And they're like, Ugh, getting like, like ahogados. Like, they can't even breathe <laughs> because it's so, so hot. So I get it. And I support that. But I think when you go uh, Ohio, it's one thing. So that's okay. But Minnesota, like, I'm <laughs> sorry that I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see if people are going to go to the stadium in St. Paul. Oh, yeah, I mean, if they, if we see a huge section of like Hondureños, just like you made it <laughs> oh, all no. the way. Out. No, 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 they're going to be there. <laughs> okay. They're going to be there. Yesterday, I was just talking about this yesterday on my Facebook and I'm like, hey, I, I, I blah, 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 whatever I was saying. I don't even remember exactly what I was posting, <laughs> but a lot of Hondurans. Oh, I live here and it's being found. I think yeah. in a tent. <laughs> oh, it's going to get cold. And I'm like, there's Honduran people there. So yeah. they're going to go anyway. You okay. won't see anything but their eyes as they're just covered in layers of scarf. <laughs> yeah, but they'll be blue be and white. white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there will be blue and white everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> you obviously get to cover so many amazing sports being part of Telemundo. Obviously, football has to be your favorite. But what's your favorite competition to, to, I guess, be a part of? Is it the World Cup? Is it the Olympics? Mm, my favorite? Wow, that, that's a really tough question. Um, I think the biggest, of course, there's nothing bigger than the World Cup. I mean, whenever uh, we were in Russia, I remember the Egypt games were watched for half, half a million people watching an Egypt game when Mo Salah is not playing. 
Remember when Ramos yeah. broke him? So we were like, are, people are watching this game. So it is amazing because nothing is bigger than the World Cup. But I think uh, as a fan of sports, a sports fanatic, and as, as a journalist, I think it's more rewarding the Olympics. Because when in the Olympics, you have to learn about a lot of sports that you're, I, I mean, I didn't grow up talking about triple jump or <laughs> I don't know, hockey sobre césped or I mean, there's over a thousand athletes and 90% of them are unknown, like nobody knows about them. So we have to know every story. And it's not like you can Google, oh, let's, I'm going to Google Juanita Perez in triple <laughs> yeah. jump and you're going to get it because they're not famous, you know, they're just, they, so you have to dig and, and do your homework uh, in a different way. You have to really get in, in it. And sometimes you're going to be talking about soccer or I don't know, whatever else, gymnastics. And you think they're a sport or a discipline is not going to be important. And all of a sudden, one of us Latinos is doing something amazing. Yeah, yeah. And oh, no, no, <laughs> we have to cut to whatever. Like this time I, in, in Tokyo, I remember, guys, guys, we have to go to badminton. And I'm like, badminton? <laughs> and I'm freaking Kevin Cordon from Guatemala was kicking ass. I'm sorry, yeah. can I say kicking yeah, yeah, ass? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Cordon was kicking ass. And I'm like, Yes, I did my homework on badminton. Yeah. I can talk about it. So it's rewarding because you, you see that it's worth it, you know, like every single thing. And that is such a a, um, a a great feeling. Like even if if we're not the, the you know the same kind of Latino from that country, mm -hmm. it's just like I'm supporting I'm supporting Kevin because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, if I there was him, a Honduran okay? curling team, <laughs> yeah. I'd be behind them all the way. Just I, <laughs> and I, love, but, I would love to see that just get called by the same guy who yells go. <laughs> 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 but and this is what yeah. I really I, I, what I love about. Uh, you you know, uh, especially uh, like Latino networks, is that there's something to the the Latino experience that that networks like Telemundo can capture, where it, it, it it's the the pride is in. Who knows exactly what the pride? The pride is in the, yeah. the we, that we we all speak Spanish, that we eat arroz con habichuela. Like there's there's uh, something yeah. that Free bonds holders. us, and we're like we we yeah. need to su support this young man or woman at these games. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. It was it, it was really uh, um, amazing. To me, the Olympics are are everything. Like you get and at the end cuz there's like long long days, like 16 hour game day, days when you're just talking about game after game after game and then go to that, go to that and then what was this? And so at the end of the day you say, "Hey, you know what?" all that work, it was completely worth it. And you think, hey, who's going to care about if we talk about badminton or, or not? But then you get like their cousins or someone in their barrio yeah, saw yeah. it and I'm like oh my gosh he's on Telemundo we're gonna tag it and, yeah. and sending you all those posts yeah. and it's it's really it's really nice it, it feels like I'm in the TV of the old times where it was really really it really matter <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. we were saying <laughs> All right, Anna, that was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much uh, for everything so far. We have to Thank we have you. to get to our uh, Golasso gift right now. This is your opportunity to celebrate a goal on our television show that we will clip and turn into a gift that will live on the internet forever. Oh no! <laughs> so Alexis will give you uh, will give you a scenario, and you uh -huh. feel free to celebrate this goal uh, however you like. Uh, Alexis, what do you suggest? Uh, for I think here's guy? a good scenario. Let's say you're playing just a fun weekend game. You're playing a little bit of soccer. Yet for some reason, somebody says, "Anna, if your team wins, Honduras qualifies for the World Cup." <laughs> Now you, in the last second, happen to score a beautiful free kick, goes right in the top corner, and you look over and you realize Honduras is going to the World Cup. How do you celebrate? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Can I, do I do it now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Last, last minute goal? Mm, corner yes. kick, you said? Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here you go. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, here's by the way, don't ever if you if you're gonna rob uh, you're gonna you are gonna get hit with hair and a thousand kicks. <laughs> if you mug on uh, a Yorka, you're gonna die from a thousand right, right, kicks. Right. You, you, she will she will uh, attack you with all four limbs at once. Jeff. Yeah, who is who is the uh, the girl in um Street Fighter? I don't remember, really, uh, man. The oh, Chung Lee, Chun Lee. I don't or... remember. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, Chun Lee, right? Dude, oh man, don't Amazing. play with my. Don't play with Amazing, my feelings. Yeah. That's really me. You know how dress one qualifies. That's no. what you guys so get we're, we're, we're trying to keep Thank the dream God alive. I have double nationality. I can root for the US. <laughs> You're gonna qualify. Uh, there you <laughs> You're go. gonna qualify. You Perfect. get to root for us. <laughs> Anna, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute honor. Uh, we're huge fans of you. Best. Huge fans of all your work. Is there anything you want to let people know about before we let you go? You have to watch the World Cup qualifying games. I mean, we have Mexico, Mexico, Jamaica. Poor Tata Martino. He needs to win that game. If not, all the love <laughs> for the Argentina is going to be like, no, no, no. They're going to make him a choripan if he doesn't win that game. And well, what else? What else? I don't know. Follow me on my social media. I'm going to start next month. I'm starting my own podcast. It's going to be called Sex, Sports, hey. and a Little Bit More. So I'm going to be telling you everything about wow. it. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, is that's and that you know that covers everything in life uh, all those things right there yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. exactly exactly that's my list <laughs> <laughs> like pizza is the only thing I'd add <laughs> Anna uh, thank you so much uh, uh, and again everybody follow uh, Anna at Anna Yurka on, uh, on all social channels uh, as well um, you can follow us at Soccer Cooligans and make sure to uh, subscribe to the Fubo Sports YouTube channel for more clips and episodes of the show alright uh, Anna let us end the show the way we normally do as is tradition. Thank you again for joining us. So for Ana Yurka, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? The, the Cooligans! Cooligans!